Thank you for logging on to GrowX. By the end of this video, you will know what Plant Magic's Coca Curl will do and how you can use that to uh, improve your grow. How you can use Aqua Clay Pebbles from Canna. They all pop it or all mixed by, from BioBiz. And it's, and it's uh, sibling, the light mix, designed for younger plants. And growth to technologies alpha mix it's full of food Thank you for log logging on to GrowX Hydroponics. Today we're going to have a special video. I'm going to talk about something that most of the industry people, people do not understand. Um, what is soil? People think that just because they come to a store and they, they come in and, they, and they, sh they show me this and they go, oh, I grow in dirt. They always say, I grow in dirt, I grow in soil, I grow in earth. Um, I'm going to make some clarifications. They're actually not accurate. In hydroponics, the definition of hydroponics is the cultivation of plants without soil. So it's soilless cultivation. Um, and the definition of soil, per se, I'm going to spend some time just explaining this. The definition of soil is that it consists of three things. Sand, silt, and clay. The sand and the silt are in nanometers. And the clay can be, um, which is the, the part of the soil that contains the nutrients, that contains the chemical um, differences between different soils. It's in the clay. If you were to look closely into into soil, you see that the smallest component would be clay. Clay would be like two, two pieces of glass, wet glass, stuck together. You know how they can slide this way, but they're kind of hard to separate this way. So clay is a very uh, complicated, um, elaborate comp uh, composition of chemicals. Some of them are bad for plants, some of them are good for plants. So in the 1930s, we developed for the first time soilless media or soilless substrates. Uh, we're going to talk about cocoa, we're going to talk about uh, peat, peat moss, sphagnum peat moss, we're going to talk about clay pellets, and many other substrates that we can use in hydroponics. But just to clarify, once again, hydroponics is not the cultivation in dirt, it's the actual opposite. It's the soilless cultivation. We have absolutely no dirt in any of these products. When you go to a hydroponics shop and you say, oh, I'm going to buy some dirt, you're not. There is not one gram of dirt in any of these products, with a few ex few exceptions. So I'm going to start. I'm going to start comparing for the first thing, um, peat versus uh, cocoa coir. Uh, peat has been around since forever. It's um, it is mined from the ground. Uh, there's mines in uh, in Estonia. There's mines in Ireland and in northern England as well. Uh, most of the peat comes from Canada as well in the, in the Americas. And if you can zoom into here, here there's uh, two, two composites you see. You see perlite, which is a white expanded um, pumice. And then you, you see the peat. Peat is mined from the ground. So it literally is, excavators come and pick it out of the ground. It's uh, basically buried forest. Uh, it is not renewable resource. This is, unlike cocoa, this is not a renewable resource because it is mined from the ground. Cocoa comes from the coconut husks and the outer, the outer husks from the cocoa. It's cellulose, a lot like the, a lot like the peat. They look a lot similar. This one here has no perlite, and cocoa is, comes from the coconut. That is renewable because that's actually a, a waste product from the textiles industry. So cocoa is a renewable product. Peat is not renewable product. And I have a list here, this is really interesting. I made a list of when was the first time we actually came up with these mixes. And it was actually in the University of Yale, uh, Yale, Yale University in Connecticut, and it was in the 30s. And the, fir the very first, um, I looked this up, the very first soilless mix was done there, and it was composed by, they had um, 
They started with one bushel of peat moss, one bushel of vermiculite, which is a lot like perlite, but it's uh, golden, and it holds more water than it does air. One pound of dolomite lime for, for uh, pH control, and I had one gram of boron, which is nothing. I think today, I think we have more boron in our tap water than we do, <laughs> than we do in our soil. Um, and it had two and a half grams of iron chelate. They knew back then, all of this science, hydroponics, was developed pretty much in the 30s. And it was due to advancements in chemistry that allowed that to happen. So um, back then, they already knew that iron was one of the first uh, elements that you just tend to not have enough of in substrates or in soils. Um, and then they also added 20% superphosphate, which is almost a few, almost a half a pound, and some potassium nitrate as a small fertilizer. So they did have some food on there. Um, so this is the very first soilless mix done in Yale University in the 30s. That was kind of interesting. And we haven't changed much from then. We have replaced the vermiculite with perlite, which we have here. As I explained earlier, this is just pumice. It's exp expanded rock. And um, much like the clay, the clay pellets are also just expanded clay. In fact, the name of this, there's, we give it so many names here in our industry, hydro corals, hydroton, uh, hydro, hydro rocks, hydro corn. Um, the technical name for this is LECA, L-E-C-A, which is an acronym for Lightweight Expanded Clay Aggregate. And in any hydroponic uh, system, you can use any inert element. You can use broken glass. You can use broken bricks. You can use rocks as long as they don't dissolve, uh, as long as they don't uh, fall apart and underwater. Uh, you can use clay, uh, plastic garbage. You can chop up the plastic in little pieces and you can use that as a substrate. It basically serves as an anchor to the roots. So all of these bags, when you go into a hydro store, you get sometimes you get overwhelmed. You're like, oh wow, what, which bag of all these do I use? And they all contain these soilless composites. And that depends on the, the system that you want to use it on. If, you're, if you have an automated system, you can get away with, uh, with substrates like a mix of cocoa with perlite, a cocoa with, uh, with clay pellets. This, the more percentage of clay that you put in here, the faster it will drain. When you have an automated system, you can do that. You can put, you can grow just in pure clay, in clay pellets, and that's not a problem. You'll never, because it's automated, you'll never run out of water. You'll never run, you'll, the plants will never dry out. On the other hand, on the other hand, if you don't have an automated system and you're watering by hand, then you're going to want to choose a substrate that will hold more moisture for longer periods of time uh, because it's not automated. So you're going to do it by hand manually. Um, between cocoa and cocoa and peat, I'm going to I'm probably going to make some people angry out there, but there are some differences, fundamental differences, and one is a superior. One is definitely a superior uh, substrate over the other. Like I mentioned earlier, cocoa is renewable. Peat is not. Peat is mined out of the ground. Two, cocoa holds more air and more water than does peat. That's a huge plus. More air and more water. It sounds like, it's, it sounds like you can't do both, but it does. It has way more pores. If you look under a microscope, it's, cocoa is more porous. It's also like a sponge. So unlike a long fiber, unlike peat, when peat dries, it contracts and it tears roots. It's called settling. And cocoa doesn't do that as much. It's much less uh, shrinkage. When it, as, it dry, as it dries, there's less shrinkage on the cocoa than there is on the peat. That's a huge plus. It's better, gentler on your roots. And another benefit is that when cocoa dries and when, when you water it, it's hygroscopic. It, it, it wants to attract water. On the, on the other hand, peat, as you know, you might have left some, sometimes you might, you might have gotten carried away and, or not paid attention. Some, some of your plants might have dried. You'll see that the peat will contract around the edges. Once it dries, it doesn't attract water. And when you pour water on it, you'll see the water run off, the, running off the tops. That's called channeling. And peat, Steinman peat moss does that. It does channel. Cocoa does not, not, not at all. So, between cocoa and peat, I prefer, I prefer a cocoa substrate. And you can always come to a store and mix your own mix based on, 
based on your uh, your water system. The most flexible and the most inert would be these two right here. The cocoa has absolutely zero uh, nutrient input, so it's inert. And the clay, of course, is just broke. Is just clay pellets, so that's completely uh, inert as well. These two together, I can control the drainage. The drainage of how fast the water goes through my through my plants, and so. Um, or how much I can retain the water. If I add more cocoa, it will, be, it will retain more water. If I add more, like, so these two are strictly hydroponic nutrients, uh, hydroponic uh, substrates, these two right here. These other ones are peat-based and they're not really renewable. And uh, they already have some food in them. So now that we know that we, we don't use any soil in hydroponics, how do we know which bag to choose, right? Well, that depends on the system. As I mentioned earlier, if you're watering by hand, you probably want to use a substrate that will retain some moisture for you. If you're not watering by hand and you have an automated system with a pump, you probably want to use a substrate that can just drain right through. Drainage is very important. So I'm going to go through real quick and explain what each one of these bags is. This is coca coir. It's 100% pure coca coir. It's been expanded, 50 liters. So it's already expanded. It's already moist. Um, you probably want to go ahead and rinse this and uh, charge it with quarter strength uh, nutrient solution if you're working for, with the small plants. But this is just pure cocoa fiber, 100%. This here is the clay pellets that I showed you guys earlier. And you can most certainly mix these together. You can mix a 50-50 ratio, which I personally like, or a 70-30. I like that very much. It improves the drainage once you, when you add the clay to it. This is the all mix. This is a, a peat-based soil substrate. So whenever you look at a bag, you always want to think, is it peat-based or is it cocoa-based? This one's peat-based. And the Omics actually has some nutrients in it already. They throw, they throw in there some guanos, some um, earth, earthworm castings. Uh, they might have thrown in some uh, dolomite lime for, for pH control. Uh, so this one's already ready to go and it has about uh, two weeks worth of food in it. But again, peat-based. Here you have the light mix. This is what it is. It's, they call it light because it is lighter. It has more uh, uh, drainage properties, so it has uh, more perlite in it. It also has less food, uh, so it's intended for younger plants, for seedlings. But again, peat-based. So when you walk into a store, you always want to say, is it cocoa or is it peat-based? Um, and then the last bag here I want to show you, this was, this was probably the closest thing to soil in hydroponics. Um, this is also peat based, so it is mined from the ground. And it has uh, a, blend, a blend of food, uh, organic food, a mineral food. They threw perlite in there for drainage. Uh, maybe even sand, because it is a quite heavy bag. They threw some sand for, for, to improve drainage. And, but it's still not soil, because there's no clay, and there's no, there's no uh, real silt in it. It's still also peat based. So I hope this clarifies a few uh, issues regarding what is soil, what is not soil, and what is, what's the best um, substrate for you in hydroponics. I hope you enjoy the video.